When I was coming out of high school in 1961, I wanted to be a journalist, and Don Feltner, who was the director of public information at Eastern at that particular time, gave me an opportunity to come and be a student worker on his staff and become involved with the Eastern Progress. I've got wonderful memories. One of my fondest and earliest memories of Spider was in my freshman year after a football game at Bowling Green, and I felt like I was in pretty high cotton as a college freshman because I wound up at a table with Dr. Martin and Spider Thurman and Don Feltner and John Vickers. And uh, I was immediately on Dr. Martin's left, and John Vickers was immediately on his right, and John had been saving this beautifully fried piece of chicken white meat, I think, to, to <laughs> eat last. And Dr. Martin it was sort of like gigging a frog he, with his one practice motion with his fork. He says, John, you don't want that, do you? And uh, speared it. And uh, on the way back, I was in the car with Don Feltner and uh, Spider Thurman, and they kidded me that I scooted my plate <laughs> as far away from Dr. Martin as I could. I like to tell people that I majored in Bill Burge. I never will forget my first class with Bill. Uh, he started it by saying something like, uh, what if what people think happened was as important as what really happened? <laughs> and that kind of piqued my interest and it went on from there. So I took everything that he taught. Miss Hood was the matriarch of women's athletics on this campus. Somebody told me, and it was good advice, that at commencement exercises to sit by Miss Hood. <laughs> because in the sleeves of her master's robe that she wore, she would have both sides stuff full of things like crackers and candy bars and <laughs> Hershey's Kisses and stuff like that. So if you sat by Miss Hood at commencement, you weren't going to go hungry. And Lois Colley worked right outside the president's office. She was his administrative assistant. And Miss Colley had worked for Herman Lee Donovan, for W.F. O'Donnell, and then for Bob Martin in that capacity. And when she retired, a graduate assistant by the name of Linda Gassaway wrote this feature article about Miss Colley, and in it she said that Miss Colley had known each of the last three presidents of Eastern <laughs> intimately. And uh, Miss Colley was embarrassed by one of the interpretations of that. I went through the ROTC program, did serve two years on active duty as a commissioned officer at High Altitude Air Defense Missile Officer. 1966 through 68, it was just pure luck of the draw in terms of the assignment, the specialty that I had that prevented me from going to Vietnam. And I also went through the teacher education program and was uh, certified to teach, which is something that I never did at the uh, secondary level other than one, my one semester of, of student teaching. But you learn a lot about principles of leadership in ROTC beyond their military application. And you learn a lot about the nature of the human mind and the way people learn and some communication skills uh, in teacher education. And I think those have served me well. I had three great mentors on this campus. Bob Martin, J.C. Powell, and Hanley Funderburg. And there's not a day that goes by that I don't experience something uh, that I can draw on lessons that I learned from those three very different, uh, but very capable men. During the Martin administration, Don Feltner was my direct superior, but I did have a lot of contact with Dr. Martin. And most of what I did during those years was cause university positions to be reflected on paper. With JC, I was his eyes and ears, his alter ego to some extent, involved with a lot of committee work, on the campus. The Division of Public Safety always reported to me, and he involved me in some university advancement work. With Hanley, it was more of the same, although he involved me with intercollegiate athletics and NCAA and the OVC federal agencies to a whole lot greater extent than I had been before the Department of Labor, the Department of Civil Rights, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. I was essentially the institution's point of contact for all those agencies during Hanley's time. A lot of work with the EKU Foundation with him. Hanley and Jim Clark and I spent a lot of time together in Frankfurt when the legislation was in session. I had retired, I mean, I had completely retired. I'd gone through the RTP. So it came as such a surprise 
but it was extremely gratifying. Just the very fact that I would be considered was a great honor. It was almost surreal when it happened in August. In October, when they removed the interim and put me to work through July of 2010, watching that happen, it was almost like an out-of-body experience. We had a lot of change, not just the two presidents in a short time, but a lot of turnover of deans, of vice presidents, policies changing, a lot of turmoil, which maybe was good, but I think when President Whitlock came, he was just the right person at the right time. I've had several folks say to me, perhaps it would have been well if Doug had been president when Dr. Funderburk retired. I don't think we would have appreciated Doug like we do now. And I know there's a great appreciation for the caring and the love that we see on campus. We were ready for that. He's been the healing ointment that was so needed here. He loves EKU yeah. uh, more than anyone, maybe even Dr. Martin. It's been professionally fulfilling. And the biggest part of that is the ability to work with some excellent people. The faculty and staff on this campus are remarkable, and they have a real hunger to accomplish something good and to make this a better place. And what's being taught has changed, but I think the core values, the things that make Eastern truly Eastern, the opportunities that we provide people, the care that we show people, the kind of compassionate place that I think we've always been. I would hate to see those things ever change.